Okay, so we're going to start working on the next set song. This one's going to involve a lot of new chords. So first thing I'd like to do is go each section separately, and each one I will introduce the chords that are new chords that are in there. First part is the verse, and it's going to start with an E minor, which we already know. The next chord is a D, which looks like this. I got my middle finger on the first string. 2nd fret, my pointer finger on the 3rd string, 2nd fret, and my ring finger on the 2nd string, 3rd fret. You might be able to see a sort of a triangle shape here. A couple of things to watch out when you're doing this chord, sometimes I see a lot of people ending up with the ring finger on the 3rd string, and it sounds like that. Uh, things like this yeah uh, so on so gotta make sure that you're landing on uh, on the right frets every time so this is your D chord next chord is a C which you already talked about in the previous saddle uh, master and last chord is a B7 which looks like this middle finger on the 5th string, 2nd fret, pointer finger on the 4th string, 1st fret, ring finger on the 3rd string, 2nd fret, and the pinky on the 1st string, 2nd fret. Again, one of the things I see is the pinky kind of finding it hard to squeeze in and stay on the 2nd fret, so I see people ending up putting the pinky on the 3rd fret or on the second string, or on more than one string. Really, you gotta kind of squeeze everything in. Uh, you see that my middle finger moves back quite a bit to give the pinky enough room to settle into the second fret. Uh, the last thing I want to address is that going from chord to chord. So first of all, from going from E minor to a D, not much there to work with, except the fact that the, point, the pointer finger and the middle finger stay in the same fret. They just have to kind of glide all the way down to the third and first string. And then you just have to add the ring finger. Next, D to C. There's really no tricks here. You're just going to have to bear it. And practice that switch D to C. C to B7. Again, not much there. The only thing you can kind of lean on is the fact that these two fingers, the pointer finger and the middle finger, are kind of maintaining the same shape, even though you have to make a little bit of adjustment. Here on the C, they're actually two strings apart, where here is they're right next to each other. One way to practice it is to actually go one part at a time. Just C. And steps. Yeah. Last but not least is going from the D B sub sorry from the B7 to the E minor. Notice that here, again, you don't have a lot to work with. You have to lift up everything and put it back. However, you can go to this E minor. Notice I'm pressing the same spots as I do in the old version of the E minor. I'm just using two different fingers to do it. Instead of putting the pointer and middle, I'm going to use the middle and ring. And then that's an easier switch from the B7. Unfortunately, it messes up the switch to the D. Now this is a lot more work. Which one should you do? The one that's more comfortable for you. Either way, uh, as long as you get to the E minor, you're in good shape. All right, once you've practiced the switching, we're gonna play two measures of each chord. Four, four strums to the bar. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, and B seven, two, three, four, two, three, four, and repeat it. And just kind of slowly work your way up to the on those switches. Take your time. You can even separate each switch, se each chord combination separately. Just practice E minor to D. Just D to C. Just C to B7. Just B7 to E minor. And even mix and match a little bit. We did a song already that goes from E minor to C. Try going from D to B7. Try to go from E minor to B7 just back and forth. Try all the combinations that you can to get your, your grip on those chords together. But that's our verse. Two measures on each one of those chords. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. There you have it. Next section that we got to talk about is the chorus. This one involves the G chord, but we'll get there in a minute. The first chord that we got to talk about is the E. Notice that the E is kind of like an E minor, but with an added finger here. Yeah. So here's another reason why you might want to get used to doing the E minor this way, because going to an E is just really involves putting you adding your pointer finger on the third string first fret um, rather than doing this which is a lot busier and a lot more invo a lot more involved as far as finger acrobatics Okay, so we're going from an E to a D that we talked about in the last uh, segment. The only thing you have going for you here is leaning on this pointer finger, E. Slides up one fret, kind of gives you a, sp a spot to lean on when you have to switch to the D. So one measure of E. One measure of D. Back to one measure of V. And this is the G chord. No, I use this G chord in this particular situation because I'm coming from an E and my middle finger is already there on the right spot. Fifth string, second fret. And the other two fingers that I need to do is the ring finger on the sixth string, third fret and the pinky here on the first string, third fret. This is a chord that a lot of people wrestle with when they try to play it the first time. It requires that stretch here between your ring finger and pinky and it takes some time to get used to. Some people opt to doing this instead. Point, I'm pressing same spots but different fingers. Pointer finger is where the middle finger was on the uh, fifth string second fret. Middle finger on the 6th string 3rd fret and then the ring finger here on the 1st string 3rd fret but the switch from E is a lot more involved now you want to practice it both ways so you can always have a chord that's comfortable for you to get to um, when you're looking for it depending on the chord you're coming from so the chorus is just going to be one measure of E one measure of D, 
one measure of E, one measure of G, and we're going to repeat it. And that's the chorus. I will point out there is one chorus where we stay on the G a little longer than usual. Last thing I want to show you is at the end of the song, we're actually going to go from reverse and change the ending a little bit. When we get to uh, C and then B7 to E minor. And we're going to alternate between those two chords for a while. Minor, so you're actually practicing the end of the song when you're practicing this part. And at the very end of the song, instead of going from a B7, we're going to go to an E. Which is going to be the very last chord of the song. We're just going to strum it once and let it ring. And that's all the sections you have to worry about.